Welcome guys. So in this section, let's try to understand what is GraphQL and how it helps in improving the performance of your application. Okay. So first of all, to understand the definition of GraphQL and how it works. So before that, you have to first see how the existing systems are. Okay. So we already have APIs in place and how GraphQL comes into picture here. Will that be an complementary for APIs or is GraphQL's replacement for APIs? You know, first you have to understand that and then you can deep dive into GraphQL concepts. Okay. So this is our existing infrastructure. I will give you one real time example and explain you how the current system is behaving and how to optimize the current project architecture with the help of GraphQL. So that's how let's drive to understand the importance of GraphQL. And then I will come back to read the definition and the core concepts of it so that you can correlate and understand better. Okay. So for now, let's consider one example. So let's say there is one movie series, okay, web series, which may streaming in Netflix or Amazon Prime. Okay, that's a famous um, series, which is there from many years. So developers or, you know, directors, producers of that web movie series have developed one website for us. Okay, because the characters in that movie series became so famous that people will Google about their characters, learn about their personal life and the characters episodes, particular episode numbers, you know, all they can browse and get it from their official uh, web series website, what they created. Let's assume that. Okay. So now this is the home screen of that uh, website. Okay. So basically anybody can come and type the name of the character whom they were uh, interested to know about. Okay. So there will be one edit box where you enter the character details and hit and enter. And this is how home screen loads on the website. First, the name of the character, I mean the character you searched and character status if he is alive or dead because it's been long time that web series have aired in the tv channel so they could be dead by now so the status if they are still alive something like that and that is the first section you see on the home screen and next it shows up the location dimension so where exactly they are right now on the earth okay maybe latitude longitudinal and the location name if they are in los angeles or paris or mumbai you know their details where they are staying and character episode air date. That means the recent episode where that character has been participated in and when it got aired on the TV channels. So those details here you will see. And finally on the bottom, you will see the all other episodes uh, of that character. Okay. So these are the some details we want to show on the home screen. So that is the requirement of the client. Okay. The web series guy want to design the home screen of the website like this. So let's say you have uh, opened that website on the mobile. So this is how it shows character and the location details, episode, air date of that character and the list. Now, so the client has given this requirement to the developer and what developer does is they already have uh, different uh, REST APIs in place. So if you want to get character details, then there is one REST API in picture where if you send the name of the character and based on that, you get what is the character ID, character name, if the status, if he's alive or dead and his gender and type of the character, that means he's a hero, villain or whatever. And the origin from where that character is and what is the age of that character. So this is one REST API call. So where you pass the character name and you get the character details, complete details of the character as a response back. And here developer need this API because now to load the name of the character and the status, he know that that can be extracted when they call this API. So um, when the front end page loads, they will make sure that they call this API, they get the data like this in the JSON response. In that response, they will use parsers to get the name and status. These two fields only, right? These two fields they'll display. So similarly, when home screen loads, this is just not enough. We also need a uh, character dimension and name for that. There is another API again, which will only focus on location details. Now, when you send a character name, it will tell you that uh, dimension and name of the character and residents if who are staying in that area and the URL, I mean, location URL. And uh, when that location is created in the database, like when the character moved into that location, some details about that character uh, location guys. So, the one thing you need to observe is if you want to get personal details of the character, then there is one API call and for location stuff, obviously there will be another, right? So that's how the APIs are there. So basically REST APIs are mean to serve the purpose of its specific domain and episodes. See episodes again, there will be another API call, right? You cannot get the episode details in the location for that. You know, um, there is another API where you can get the character's latest episode air date. So when you send the character by ID, then it will give the 
what is the latest episode air date what is the episode and what are different characters participated in the episode and the url of the episode where they can watch and when that url sorry when that episode is created right that particular episode right this is one api call and similarly so if you shop in amazon right if you buy a product at the bottom it will show the suggestion of other similar products right in udemy also if you buy a course at the bottom it will show the other courses which you can interested to so similarly the client want on the bottom the other episodes also where they can interested to watch apart from the characters episode air date so if they got if they want all episodes list for that there is another api because this api is only to get the episode based upon the latest air date and here where all episodes are displayed okay so what developer realized is there are four apis on four different domains characters locations episode details and the whole list of episodes so when client asked that i need this home screen then the moment they realized that okay to make the home screen load, we have to make sure that we have to call these four API calls and get the data from API calls and then parse it and show on the home page. Okay. So here, um, when we are making the call to the APIs, we don't need all the details because the API returns the response with so many details. But in the front page, we just need air date here with this API. Okay. And location, we just need a dimension and a name itself. And here we just need name status. So all that developer has to write parsers in the front end code when they call back end APIs and then finally they construct home screen like this. Perfect. And you will see this is the architecture of, of your project, how it happens when the home screen loads when you search for a character. Okay. So now there are some disadvantages here. The disadvantages is number one, overfetching. Okay. So overfetching means you only need name of the character in the status but your response is giving so many things here back. So because of that, you ended up creating some parser methods where, you know, out of the whole JSON response, you just need these two. So you have to write some POJO classes to parse your JSON or use JSON path to exactly extract them. So similarly here also, and all the three places, though you are getting many details, you just need one or two. Okay. So you are overfetching the details than what is required. So that is one problem here. And another problem is performance issue. To load a home screen, you are ending up calling four API calls, right? So obviously there will be a performance issue where the HTTP transfer should happen that you need to send a request and it has to get a response back. All these, you know, four API calls, four API calls should give the response back and it should load on the page. So that's why in e-commerce websites, when you see on home screen itself, you see so many things, right? Somewhere one catalog you will see and right side you will profile you will see and the bottom section will be your other details. That means so many API calls are playing a role. Now, when you open a Facebook homepage, how many things you see there? Uh, posts, ads, and the left side, your profile, and many details, right? That means so many API calls are called, and that reduces the performance of loading your page. So these are the problems. So with these problems, what happened is, a few years back, Facebook guy have introduced a concept called GraphQL, okay? So this tries to address the problems what we currently saw here. So here we are not reinventing any wheel or reinventing and creating any new APIs here. So what they did is there will be one server side interface. Okay. So this is a home screen. You are still asking the same details, but instead of making a call to multiple endpoints, because these rest APIs are sitting in different endpoints, right? So instead of gathering the data from different endpoints, you will make a query to single endpoint. Okay, so this single endpoint GraphQL is responsible to get the data you need from the different places. Okay, and here you exactly ask for what you need. So here what happens is when you make endpoint, what you get, you get a lot of details. And again, that is the overhead for a front end guy to filter and to just extract character and the status out of the whole response what they got. But here you just send that as a query. So there is a concept called GraphQL query. There is a syntax, there is some standards to write a GraphQL query. So you send a GraphQL query to the server side and asking that, okay, get me the name of character, character status, dimension, air date list. That's all. These are the details I need. And you send that query information to one single endpoint. And this GraphQL um, server side is responsible to resolve whatever you asked. Okay. So it might talk to the rest APIs or it might talk directly to the databases or it might talk to some legacy systems. Doesn't matter. Okay. That's the duty of a developer to design a GraphQL so that it talks to whatever it want to get the information what client is asking. Okay. So in the back end, what does GraphQL does is GraphQL exposes a schema saying, Hey, these are the things I can give you. Now in this case, let's say GraphQL can uh, give you all these things, right? So you cannot ask GraphQL, which GraphQL does not know. There are 
it exposes a schema that these are the hundred things I can give you. Okay. Now you ask me what you need. Now here you will ask only six things here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Only six, uh, six fields data you need. So out of hundred things, what GraphQL can fetch you, you are asking six things. And if those six things are present in what GraphQL can provide out of hundred, if those are present, then what does GraphQL does is, okay, so these are in my list, so I can give you. Now you might get doubt how GraphQL can give you. So back in what developer does is, so developer does writes a resolver functions. Okay, now you are asking name of character. So first of all, you have to define that in GraphQL schema. So developer in the back end, what they do is once they get name, they write a function to see how they can fetch the name of character. So that resolver functions are written inside the GraphQL. So you might talk to REST APIs, you might talk to databases, wherever you want to talk, do it. Okay, write the code to talk to any systems in the back end, but ultimately give the back the name to the uh, back to the person, right, to the front end. See, this is the same way how APIs also work. You might be confused. Then what is the difference between APIs and GraphQL? So difference here is in, in APIs, see, it will get the complete JSON response, the whole schema it returns back, okay? So in GraphQL, what happens is it exactly gives you what you need. It don't give you more information or it don't give you less information. When you ask in a query that I need six details, you exactly get six details back. But whereas in REST API calls, uh, you send a name of character to get the details. But in your front end, you need only status, but it will fetch you everything. It's up to you that you need to parse this res response and take whatever you want. But that additional parsing is not required here when you place GraphQL as a middle interface. That all that it takes care and it will only give you what you need. Okay, that's cool thing, right? And another beauty here is performance. See, from front end, you are just making one call, that's it one endpoint call, just like an API call, you are making to the GraphQL and you are getting the response back, okay? So within one call itself, you can fine tune performance. The, these GraphQLs are very fast and flexible that once they get a call, they immediately talk to all the instances, like backend all stuffs, wherever you want a data. It could be APIs, databases, legacy systems, or somewhere, CSV files, but, and it gives you response back, mostly in the same time what a normal API call can give you. So that means you see, that performance wise in the typical um, REST API structure, uh, you have four endpoints call you are making to get the response where here you are making only one endpoint call. That's the beauty. And another thing, just don't think that GraphQL is replacing REST APIs here. See REST APIs are already there. Here all the yellows are REST APIs, blacks are databases, okay? So we are not replacing REST API calls here, but we are optimizing the performance of our architecture by introducing GraphQL in our backend um, architecture. Okay. So this is not a replacement. This is making more optimized. And again, is this a future? Depends, right? So let's say you are working on a Facebook. When Facebook guy brought in 2012, I guess, uh, initially people have not used much and uh, Netflix is also using similar kind of thing to solve their problems but they have their own customized way of dealing this. But later, you know, as GraphQL is open source, everybody contributed to this. And now most of the companies where, you know, performance, traffic is high, e-commerce websites are using this standard GraphQL and uh, they were implementing the features to optimize their website performance. Now, does it require every way? Not required. Now let's say, um, pick any other website like your uh, mobile provider, like Airtel, T-Mobile, AT&T. They don't need so much of performance, right? They really don't show so many things on single page. When you go, when you land on a page, it will show the build details, right? Or if you want to go to profile, you can click profile and go there. So not every, you know, project requires many things to load on single screen or to optimize the performance, right? So performance is only required in e-commerce or social media websites. So there they might introduce another layer of GraphQL to optimize the things. And um, it's not mandatory that it's required everywhere, but this is really growing. The usage of GraphQL is growing. And one more thing, it's just not about fetching guys. You can create also. Now let's say there is another page where you can create character, okay? So at the same time, you want to publish an episode. So both are two different things, right? So typically in REST API world, for creating a character, you will have one API. And to create episode in the backend system, you will have another API. Again, through GraphQL, you can write a query that both episode creation and character creation can go in one single query and you can make with one single endpoint and this GraphQL have the magic of reading your query and when it realizes that it needs to be creating in two different places, then it talks to character 
uh, API and create there and similarly take your data regarding uh, episode from the same query and push to the episode and create it there. Even creation also you can do in multiple places, not just one single domain. You can create a character, create location, create an episode, everything within one single query and one single call and this GraphQL go back and do a magic of placing it in databases of however it uh, created. Okay, so that's how the GraphQL, you know, gaining a momentum and if anybody asks you what are the main advantages number one um, you can avoid overfetching and underfetching and you can ask exact details and number two the performance there are still a lot more things are there uh, but these are the main things what make people to drive towards graphql where the traffic is high now keeping this in mind let's simply just go through this definition now graphql is a query language okay as i said you have to send whatever you need in a single query how to write that query what is the procedure what is the syntax that we'll see in the upcoming lectures it's a query language and also it's a server side runtime that means this one this is a server side a runtime execution system which can fulfill the queries what you are sending on your existing data that means these are your existing datas all these apis databases legacy systems where data can be retrieved okay and this is your runtime server side system so graphql make a queries to your runtime server side system and this server side runtime system will fulfill your queries by talking and getting your data to your all backend systems okay so just make sure that this graphql is not any database it does not store any data okay this is not a storage engine at all it is just backed by your all code and the data systems okay so in the complicated architecture, you might have multiple data sources, right? You might have SQL database, my server database, Hadoop, and uh, your data can be in legacy systems and CSV files. A lot of places it can be there. Okay. So it is just bagged. That means it is a supportive system to grab or to insert data. But this GraphQL does not store anything or we can't call it as a database. Anything, any data will not store here. It's only just a server side runtime system. It fulfill your query to understand it. Okay, so as this is GraphQL server side system, it only can understand GraphQL syntax queries. So that's why uh, you need to call this endpoint and send this query so that your request will be resolved. Okay, so this is a high level introduction about GraphQL. So in the next lecture, let's learn more details about what is GraphQL schema and how to write a queries. First of all, how to know what are the different things GraphQL supports. Okay, still there are so many loose endpoints which you need to know, but this is a high level explanation. And do remember that this is not replacement to the APIs. This is something, an additional interface to make our uh, life easy. Okay, see you in the next lecture. Thank you.